What's up everybody, Big Cop Diesel coming at you. And today I'm going to uh, follow up on uh, a video I did two years ago on the Michigan PA330 uh, certification or the PA330 Act, Public Act 330. So uh, I made the one video when I officially got certified and I never revisited it and actually kind of forgot. Been busy, working, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but I was actually talking with a guy that I worked with who said that this video was the only video he could find on YouTube about PA330. So that got me thinking. So I said, well, I need to go back and revisit uh, this because there's just no information out there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, just as a refresher, um, I went through the PA330 training in October of 2019, so two years ago. Um, some things may have changed with the curriculum, I don't know. I have not contacted the school to see if anything's been updated. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say no, simply because COVID put, you know, knocked everything out of whack for a year. They didn't do anything like most uh, schools. So um, if I get motivated enough, maybe I'll reach out to see if there's any updates. Now, having said that, to maintain your certification, your certification is good for one year, uh, which I'm not working there anymore. So my certification is, is uh, lapsed. Um, but just so you know, your certification is good for one year and then you'll do an update every year, which is mostly around the legal part. If any of the laws have changed regarding what you do, uh, that would that would be the update. Uh, depending on your agency uh, or company, they may require you to go back through PPCT, uh, that kind of stuff. So for me, I went through and got certified in the use of PPCT and then went back and got recertified as an instructor. So my instructor certification is good for two years. Um, so depending on the agency, they may take that as, okay, next year you don't have to go through it because you are an instructor. You wouldn't have to go through it again till the following year. But that's up to your training um, person at your place. So uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna quickly kind of go over the uh, curriculum and then uh, the follow-up videos is I will talk about each part of the curriculum in more detail um, so you get an idea. Again, the disclaimer is this was in October of 2019 when I went. I don't know if it's been updated. If it has, it couldn't have been very many things, you know, maybe a, an insert or something into maybe the legal portion. Um, so, um, and I've got my curriculum here so that I don't screw this up. So basically, just like any kind of school or academy that you've been to, the first day is the introductions. You find out who the cadre are. They have you stand up and say who you are and where you're from. Um, and then they get right into um, um, what the program is about. It's an orientation, uh, the administrative portions of it. Uh, at this particular location where I went at Schoolcraft, if you were carrying a firearm, they don't care uh, as long as it's holstered, uh, except for when you go in to do any of the PPCT, they have lock boxes just like at any, like at any um, police station or jail. They have a lock box with a key in it. You just throw your weapon in there, take the key and hold on to it till you're done training. Uh, so a little tidbit, you don't have to um, disarm yourself before you get in the building. They have a box for you, boxes. They have a bunch of boxes on the wall where you can secure your firearm. Um, and then they kind of, they go over a little bit about the roots of American, it's called the Roots of American Jurist uh, Prudence, which is basically the, the law, our American law. Uh, as anybody knows, our laws originated mostly from Europe, right? Because we are we were a British colony. So a lot of our laws are rooted in, in the British uh, law. Um, then it rolls into constitutional law and then criminal law. Now criminal law is huge. Um, and this really takes up the whole first week, almost the entire first week is law. You have to write an exam at the end of the week, get 80% or better. 
if you don't get an 80% or better, you're done, you leave, you do not come back the following week. I don't know what the process of retesting is, if they allow it, if so, is there a waiting period you have to wait, you know, a certain amount of time, but they made that abundantly clear and they, they stood by that. Now, having said that, they're going to do everything they can to help you study, you know, give you what you need. They're not going to give you anything. I mean, you're in there testing, uh, you know, there, there's none of that kind of, you know, you have to study. The good thing is you're only studying one portion. You're not studying, you know, they're not trying to turn you into a lawyer. But what they are trying to do is make sure that you are abundantly aware of where your arrest authority comes from. Because if you don't understand where it comes from, you you will improperly apply it and get yourself in trouble. Um, so most of the week is spent on criminal law. Um, they do bring in a lawyer to um, deliver that module. It only makes sense, right? Um, you get into some criminal procedures. Um, you get into uh, arrest procedures, what constitutes an arrest. There's a difference between detaining someone and arresting someone. And the big thing about arresting someone is you're taking away their freedom. You are violating, for lack of a better term, their Fourth Amendment right to be free from uh, it's search time for and. Bed. Thanks, Alexa. Um, to be free from unreasonable search and seizure. So this is why this is important, but there's a difference between detaining someone for questioning while you conduct an investigation versus actually arresting them. Um, so uh, they go in great detail about that. Um, you learn a little bit about, you go into um, juvenile law, covers that uh, a little bit, uh, civil liability uh, and evidence, okay? So when you get into the civil liability part, of course, you just want to make sure that you're doing everything by the book. Uh, just because you may not um, have committed a crime. So let's say you, you know, arrested somebody. Um, they said that you were improper in some way. You assaulted them or you uh, grabbed their butt or something like that. Or you stole, you know, a watch or something that they had there's an investigation and even though you may be found criminally um you know nothing wrong criminally that you didn't do this stuff that doesn't mean that the person or the person's family can't come behind them and take you to court civilly try to sue you so always be aware of that and that's uh, no matter what's going on especially for you guys that are not working in a PA 330 capacity where you are basically an observe and report type of, of uh, security guard or whatever. Just kind of keep that stuff in mind. Um, so that's pretty much it on this video. Um, like I said, I just want to kind of start bringing you guys through the process and through what this course uh, uh, has for you. Um, I've made several arrests and you know never any issues usually for domestic violence in the hotel over at the uh, Rensen where I was working or trespassing um, you know so nothing too crazy you know not, not arresting any killers or anything um, but just be prepared for that once you get your book and everything I mean you have to study every night you have to um, you cannot blow it off. If you if you don't take it serious, you probably aren't going to pass, and then they're going to send you packing. And if you're, um, you know, whoever wrote the check to pay for you to go is not is not going to be a happy camper if you get sent back uh, after just the first week. So, uh, if you guys have any questions for me, just uh, drop them down below. And also, please like and share this video. Uh, I hope it gets out because, again, as I realize, there are people probably Googling this stuff to try to find out information. Um, and then just be on the lookout. I'm going to do a series of these videos, and uh, I'll be seeing you all soon. Until next time, stay safe out there.